what is going on everybody welcome back to another video in today's video i'm going to be giving you a full care guide on everything you would possibly need to know about crested geckos and their care this is bombshell my name is jeff and he's going to be helping me explain how to take care of these guys let me first start off by saying if you're a parent and you're watching this video for your kid on should I get my child this pet? I totally understand, but I promise you by the end of this video, you'll know every single thing you would possibly need to know about crested geckos. It'll reassure you that it's not a lot of work and they're very rewarding pets. I love mine. They're just awesome, awesome pets. You guys will know everything there is to know about their general care, not every single tip or trick, but that's why I have a whole YouTube channel so you can watch all my other videos. All right, guys, so before we get into it, I've been getting a ton of new viewership and new subscribers lately, so I'm gonna explain quickly who I am and what I do before we get into the video. I'm a Crested Gecko breeder specializing in Dalmatians of all kinds, Super Dals, Ink Spots, Normal Dals, I love Dalmatians, I love spotty things. Basically, I specialize in the Dalmatian trait. I'm an animal lover, I have other pets. He got the everywhere. What are you doing? Jim, what the Jim? Jim, no, Jim ate the whole thing. He ate the whole thing. I plan on making a mini farm one day and having a whole bunch of cool animals. As most of you have seen in my description, I will be buying a camel when we hit we hit 100,000, getting two. That's the goal one day down the line is to have a bunch of cool animals. Let's get into the video. First thing we're gonna talk about is how big do they get? So basically they get anywhere from five to 11 inches and you might be wondering, well, how do they get from 5 to 11? That's a big gap. They're either 5 or they're over twice that. Well, let me explain. They're 5 inches because of their body, and they would be that other extra 6 or so inches because of their tail. If they lose their tail, we'll get into that later, but if they lose their tail, they'll only be this big, obviously. So that's pretty much a full-size crested gecko right there. Now, Orca, who I've shown on the screen, as well as Bombshell, are going to be paired this year. So you guys are going to make sure you want to be subscribed and have those notifications on so you won't miss any future videos because they're gonna make some bomb babies and I might release some, I might keep them all, I don't know yet, but if I do make them available and you guys like these geckos, you'll be able to get their babies. So make sure you guys are on the lookout for that. All right, I'm gonna go put Bombshell back and get somebody else out. I don't really wanna stress them out too much, so we're gonna go get somebody new. All right, I'm back and we have Dory. Dory is one of my older female crested geckos as far as age, new to me, but she's gonna be paired with Bombshell as well, so crazy crazy babies coming obviously you guys can see all the ink spots oh, my phone's having a hard time focusing because it's trying to focus on my face my hand and the gecko obviously so um but yeah look at her she is gorgeous let me show you this side if it'll focus all right so she's hopefully just gonna sit here while we keep going but let's talk about tank size next Right, so I basically just did a video on the tank sizes that I make and how I set them up and how I make them in a recent video. So I'll link that in the description for you guys. But at the same time, I'm also going to explain very briefly how I set up their tanks and the different sizes that I use. So for babies, I use six quart shoe totes. And as far as babies, I count that as anywhere from freshly hatched to a, I would say eight to 10 ish gram gecko. I would consider the next size medium and they would go into either a 17 quart shoe tote or something maybe a little bit taller if you can find something taller. Or I have a rack system, which I also just made a video recently on that I am using now because I breed and it's way more space and cost efficient to use the rack versus tubs. But I understand if you only have a few, you would you might rather use tubs or maybe a different tank, totally okay. And then finally, what I use for my adults is 66 quart totes. And like I said, that's for geckos anywhere bigger than 20 grams. And one thing I'd like to note and add a note on too is the 66 quart totes are not super tall. It's generally recommended that they have more climbing distance and more height in their tank so they're able to climb. So since those tanks aren't as tall as I'd like them to be, I include a ton of different climbing branches or different trees, which I have a whole video on how I make branches and like the different trees and things that I use in my tanks. Again, linked in the description, but I use those to kind of make sure they have a lot of climbing spots and it forces them to go and climb and jump around and move around their tank a little bit better than they could in their vertical tank, honestly. I really do like the 66 score totes. You just have to set them up properly for success. 
substrate now substrate in the tank a lot of people are going to give me crap for it i really don't care this is what i have to use but paper towels i have a ton of them ton of crusty geckos i have to use paper towels as a substrate because having 80 plus 100 plus however many plus after this breeding season bioactive tanks is near impossible that's not even reasonable to try to clean or anything like that so the reason i use paper towels is to keep it a lot cleaner easier clean up you know it doesn't really i don't think it really matters too much because i also include lay boxes or humid hides and things like that where it's natural for them to go in and dig if they want to help get suck shut off things like that now for the people that do want some sort of bioactive substrate a mix of sphagnum moss topsoil coconut core a lot of these things would mix very well play sand into a substrate now you're not using just straight play sand but you when you mix it in with all these things totally okay for a substrate i know people are going to probably say oh you can't use sand not true so like I said, a mix of sphagnum moss, topsoil, maybe some play sand, and then some coconut core would be a perfect combination for a lay box or have using that for their substrate on their floor. Either one would work great. They love it in their lay boxes, a mix of all that. Some of those, I would not just stick with sand. I, sand is only, you're only using sand if you're mixing it with stuff and it's only a little portion of it. But like I said, the main reason I'm using paper towels is to create a clean environment for my geckos. It's easy to clean, easy to replace. I have to replace it multiple times a week. So that's what I use. One more thing I'd like to know, you are only doing loose substrate for adults. I do not do any bioactive type I mean, I don't do it at all, but if I did, I would not do it for juveniles or babies, especially you don't want any impaction, which is basically a blockage in their intestinal systems from digesting any of that loose substrate. So babies, juveniles, always paper towel. Adults could get that loose substrate if you wanted. And if you want to make it bioactive, just add isopods and springtails. And there you go. Now, like I said a minute ago, all of my enclosures for my adults have humid hides or lay boxes. Males and females get them, even though males are not going to lay eggs, they're still going to need a humid hide or a place to dig. And I like to give them some sort of natural thing that they would have had in their environment to actually be in. They would dig in the wild, so I like to give them that. The only difference in the lay box styles or humid hide lay box, same thing, is that females get a little bit of a deeper one versus males get a shallower one because males are just using it to dig and have humidity. Females are actually using it to dig and lay eggs. That's kind of my thinking on it, but I include them in every single adult crusty gecko tank that I own. Same thing with water bottles and food caps. Water bowls and food caps. I cannot talk today. This is like the hardest video I think I've ever recorded. I keep stuttering and I cannot talk. I don't know if you guys have seen my most recent short or one of my most recent shorts. Do crusty geckos actually use water bowls? They do. People say that they don't, they actually do. Every single animal that I've ever owned has used its water bowl and I've seen it do it. Leopard geckos, crested geckos, crocodile geckos, like literally every single type of gecko I've had uses it. Why not include a water bottle cap or some sort of water bowl, whatever, for your gecko? I mean, it's not gonna hurt to have it in their tank. Yes, mostly like when you're spraying their tank, they're gonna lick off of the sides or off of the plants and lick the water droplets, but they also will use a water bowl. And then, like I said, for food and water dishes, I use like a Gatorade cap for water dishes or like a bigger water bottle cap. And then for food, I just use a water bottle cap and fill it up really full for the adults and not as full for babies. We will talk about food and feeding in a minute. I'm just saying kind of what I have in their tank. Like I said, I also have a video on different branches that I use and how I make my branches or different climbing things for the crested geckos. What are you doing, Dory? Also use toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls as hides. They use them all the time. I promise you they will use them. And then obviously like plants or vines or things like that. But I have a whole video on how I set up their tank. So if you guys want to see that, then definitely check that out. Now, one more thing about their tanks, never put two males in the same tank. Males will fight, just don't do it. I don't even put females in the same tank. Yes, some people do it. Some people breed them like that. I don't, I breed them in pairs, male and female. I was just saying, I don't cohab. A lot of people do. These are solitary animals. They like to be on their own. The only time I ever put them together is for breeding purposes. And it's one male and one female because I want to be able to track exact lineage and know exactly who laid, exactly who made what baby and things of that nature. All right, guys. So before we move on to the next topic, Dory's getting a little restless. My name is Jeff. We're going to switch her out for a new one. And then we're going to talk about diet. 
All right, guys, so as I showed you earlier in the video, this is Orca, biggest female that I own. She's obviously huge. I have big hands, so she's like the size of my hand. Basically, for diet, it consists of two different things, live bugs and a commercial prepared diet, which is basically like a powder that you mix with water until you get a ketchup consistency, and then you feed that to your geckos. The main one that I use is Pangea Crusty Gecko Diet. And basically what that is, is a powder. It comes in a bag. This is apricot flavor. They also have papaya. Watermelon, growth and breeding, fig and insect, among many, many others, and I use them all. The great thing about Pangea is that it is a complete diet. It has calcium in it. You don't have to measure out calcium or try to feed them calcium or anything like that. It has it in there already. Now with breeding and feeding breeding females and breeding males and things like that, I feed a little bit different, but this is just for basic general gecko care. If you want a whole video on how I make food, for regular or for breeding geckos or anything like that, make a whole video on it for you guys. Just let me know in the comments down below. I don't use a lot of the other commercially prepared diets. I use Pangea, my geckos love it. Like I said, and like you guys saw, there's a variety of different flavors. My geckos love it, I love it, why not? No, this video is not sponsored whatsoever. I wish it was, but it's not. <laughs> I can't put that in the video. A quick thing before we talk about the bugs I feed, uh, do not ever feed your Crusty Gecko baby food. Totally inappropriate. They make diets now for them, specifically for them. Don't use baby food. Is, does this look like a human baby to you? I never did. No, don't feed it human baby food, please. It's, it's not. That's not what its diet requires. So use Pangea or use another commercially prepared diet like that. And also use insects. Let's dive into insects really quick. I have a whole video on how to feed picky crusty geckos insects because I know some people have issues feeding them. I even have issues feeding some of my geckos insects because some of them are picky. You know, you can't control if you have a picky gecko. Since I have so many, I have two whole colonies of dubia roaches. They will occasionally use like hornworms or waxworms if I have some that are skinny. Crickets are a pain in the butt. They stink. It, no thank you. I hate crickets. Don't like feeding crickets. I use dubia roaches. I use them in the same tubs that I make out of my crusty gecko tanks. I just obviously drill, I don't drill holes in there and I don't have a lid on there. Let me know if you guys wanna see that video on how I breed and keep dubias in the comments down below. Now, when I am feeding live bugs, there's a few things that I do with that. I also will dust them with calcium and vitamin powder to basically ensure a complete diet, making sure they're getting all of their vitamins, their minerals, all those things. I will often put them into, I've got a little two liter. This is basically what I do. I'll just show you, I'll just show you guys right now. I have a two liter that I cut the top off of and I have a bunch of calcium and sometimes vitamin powder in the bottom of it. I will drop the bugs in, shake it around, grab the bugs out and feed. That is how I dust them, that's what I do. Especially crickets, once you dust them and once you put them in that thing, if you're using crickets instead of dubious, they can't jump out of it because as long as they can't climb the wall, which as long as it's a brand new two liter, there should be no scratches or anything in there, they can't climb out. The only thing they can do is jump out, which I've only had that happen one time and I just grabbed the cricket and fed it off. Drop them in there, shake it around, grab them out, you're good. Voice crack. All right, I just went and put Orca away because I need a break from holding geckos while I'm recording. These guys are jumping around and freaking out and it's, near impossible to record. So we're gonna do a little segment without any geckos for one moment. All right, so for this next part, we're gonna talk about humidity and we're gonna talk about temperature. So basically for temperature, I have my gecko room being anywhere from in the winter months around 72 and in the summer months around 76. I don't go anywhere really higher than that and I try not to go any lower than that. Occasionally at nighttime, it might drop down to 70, but I would, Personally, never put it lower than 70 at nighttime. And as far as humidity, you want that anywhere from about 50 to 80%. Now, the way you get that is by misting the enclosure one to two times a day, usually morning and night. What I generally have to do is in the winter time, I have to spray twice a day, morning and night. And then in the summer, I generally will just spray at nighttime when I'm feeding. I basically just go around the enclosure, mist the walls, mist the plants. If I see that a gecko is out occasionally, not again, I don't just blast the gecko, but maybe spray some right on, on the tip of its head, tip of its nose, right in front of it. That way you can see that there's water there. Like I said, I also in, always include a water bowl because you want them to be able to have that humidity and drink from it. So you like to spray everywhere, keep it humid. substrate will help a lot but since I use paper towel I've got to spray a little bit more than you guys might have to so a little crazy fact about my gecko room I am so anal I have an AC unit a heating unit a dehumidifier and a humidifier all in my gecko room running at all times I want all my parameters 
perfect. So I have all those four things running at all times to make sure that they are in optimum health, optimum everything. They gotta be perfect and that's what I do. I also handle them a, a, a crap ton. Like I handle them so much, it's not even funny. But we're getting off topic, so let's get back on topic and let's talk about heating, lighting, and UVB. So for heating, let's say that your closure is not up to optimal temperatures. You can't get it to 72. It's not staying at 72 at least or higher, lower than 76, 77. You know, it's not, it's not warm enough. So a few tips or tricks on heat. I don't like adding heat to Crested Gecko enclosures. For me personally, I think it's a lot more convenient and easier to heat the room versus the enclosure because I've seen a lot of people add heating elements like a ceramic heat emitter or God, God forbid a light or something like that to their enclosure and it just basically makes the gecko dry out like think of like fried chicken type of a thing if they get too dry you definitely do not want that if you're gonna do anything I would definitely do a heating pad on the side of the tank maybe towards the top make sure you have a thermostat so it doesn't get too hot and it monitors it for you and you don't even have to mess with it if you do that but that's for only if people are having issues with keeping it too warm or getting it, sorry, not keeping it too warm, getting it up to the right temperature of being what they need. Try to maintain 72 to 76 as best as you can. Again, this is just a care guide. It's not a do this or else your gecko is gonna die. It's just kind of giving you all the info you need and you can kind of figure out how to make it what they need. I would not use a ceramic heat emitter and I probably would not use a light either. Honestly, no light, maybe a ceramic heat emitter if it's small. I would rather you just use like a heating pad or something like that that's warmer that you can put on maybe like the back part of the tank or the side of the tank where people aren't really going to pay attention to it or see it, but you can also raise the heat in their tank because they do need it 72 to 76. Lighting. They don't need any special lighting or UVB. I know that's a topic for debate. I don't use it for myself personally. The only type of like lighting they need is a day and night cycle, so that's 12 hour days. 12 hour nights. You can use a simple LED light and hook that up to a timer if you want. Also, if you have them in a room that gets natural sunlight and they're naturally seeing like the day and night cycle from like the window, totally okay as well. That's usually what mine get. I do have lights in my gecko room though too, so it's kind of like both worlds, but it's not the worst case scenario if you just have like a LED light on a timer. Now real quick, I'll circle back to UVB. I don't use UVB. Some people do include it. It definitely could help and is beneficial to them. There's a lot of research that shows that it is. If you feel like you wanna include it, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna say don't do it. Do whatever you feel is right. I just don't wanna be the one to give you the information on UVB or anything like that because I don't use it. So I'm not an expert and I don't wanna give you wrong information. Now I told you guys we'd come back to this later on in the video and that is tail loss. Yes, crested geckos will lose their tail for no apparent reason. You hear a noise, thunder, storms, literally anything. I had a crusty gecko lose it because of a storm. I've only had one crusty gecko lose their tail and it was a juvenile that I've been growing up and it, we had crazy storms. It literally sounded like somebody's dropping bombs outside of our house and I only had one gecko lose their tail and it was that one. It stinks, but it is what it is. Do they regrow it? No, but let me show you something weird because I'm gonna go grab a gecko that has the weirdest thing that I think I've ever probably seen on a crusty gecko and it has to do with regrowing her tail. All right guys, so this is Nubby. Now, if you're wondering how she got the name Nubby, she had lost her tail before I bought her. So I bought her, was waiting to ship her because of temperature. She had lost her tail and then when I got her, she had this on her tail it kind of looks like she tried growing it back or something. Like I've never seen a little nub that's literally like, that thing is long. Like I don't think it does justice how big that pointy tail is, man. I've never seen anything ever like that. I'll obviously pop up some pictures of some normal frog butts that I have that look like frog butts. That doesn't look like a frog butt. That looks like she was trying to regrow it. So very interesting, very odd, never seen it. She looks like she has a whole tail, man. I don't understand it. I was gonna make a whole video on is she regrowing her tail, but I, I don't think that she is. I think it's just maybe however she dropped it, it leads to that, but I don't know. Now I'm wondering, have you guys ever seen or do you have any geckos that drop their tail but have a really, really long nub? Like I'm talking like at least a fingernails length nub. This is crazy. I know Tiki's geckos talked about it and had it on one of his Instagram stories, but you know, 
Very, very weird. I'm just gonna try to copy her tongue. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Now we're gonna get into a fun part. My favorite things to do with taming geckos and getting them calm or just getting them used to you is hand walking. This is also gonna be kind of in the taming category. Again, like I said, I have a video on it if you guys wanna watch it in the description, but we're gonna talk about hand walking really quick. So hand walking is basically getting some of their energy out while also getting them used to you while also getting you more comfortable handling them. So basically it's like, it's one of the most perfect things you can do with crusty geckos, no second to none, like literally. So basically hand walking is this. I basically go like this and let her go into my hand. And as she starts walking, I just obviously put my next hand out in front of her and just keep repeating the process like that. If you wanna make it a little bit more challenging for her, you could do it like this and then she might jump or she'll be lazy. Let's see if I can do it again, get her to jump. Sometimes if you tickle their butt, they'll jump. But basically that's hand walking. You just keep going back and forth. Now another thing with handling them or picking them up, people are always scared to pick them up. I'm gonna show you a trick that works every single time. Now if you have an, like an aggressive or like a bug aggressive crusty gecko, you might not wanna do this because they might bite your hand. But if they're ever like this and you can get one finger underneath their neck and just kind of lift up, they're gonna come with you. See how she has grabbed my finger? So if I just keep lifting and move, she'll go. So if she's laying down in her tank or if she's rolling on your, or like running up your arm, you basically just take a finger or two, slide it under her neck and lift up. That way she's not running away or running up your arm. So a lot of people have issues handling them or saying they just run away or they're all crazy. Put them on your hand and hand walk them. She's kind of squeaking. She's not really a big runner, so she's not crazy. I probably should have grabbed somebody else, but since I was already showing you her little nub, uh, I just wanted to show you guys her. But basically that's all I do. That's how I get them so tame. I handle them a lot. I handle them often. Like if she just started running up my arm, let's just say she was running, running, running. You just take your two fingers, lift up. And then you can do it obviously in the other hand. She'll, if you just keep going back and forth, she'll just keep going back and forth. And you know, that's how I do it. I honestly don't recommend handling geckos under the, I would say like 10-ish gram mark because they're so small. Yes, you might have to for cleaning or whatever, but as far as like just having fun with them, I would wait till they're a little bit older because they're a lot more fragile and they could be hurt easier because they're so much smaller. But once they're like this, rock solid, man. Super hardy, super cute. Now, some of my geckos, when I'm cleaning their tank, I've got some like plants, um, pothos, snake plants, things like that in a window in my room. So sometimes while I'm cleaning a certain one's tank, like she's very chill, I trust her. Orca's another one, Odie. There's a lot of them that are very chill that'll just sit there. I let them go and explore kind of on the plants while I'm cleaning their tank. So like they might go sit up in the sun in the window. That's UVB, believe it or not. So yes, they're not getting UVB all the time, but I do offer different enrichment things for my geckos on top of their tank, which their tank setups are a lot more detailed than some of these other crusty gecko breeders, especially big ones. I'm not gonna try to call anybody out. I don't want any beef. I'm just saying for me personally, I give them lots of branches, lots of plants, and lots of enrichment, getting them out, handling them, letting them climb on things, do things, things like that. Next topic we're gonna to talk about is pricing and availability. Now, these are varying things that just depends on the breeder, the gecko, the lineage, like all these different things. What I'm gonna show you guys or tell you guys in this part is how I am going to price my crested geckos, the things that I look for when I'm pricing. The first thing I look at is lineage. I wanna know where these geckos came from and what lines they came from. I have some babies, specifically from the Damn Daniel line and other different lines, but I'll just go off of the Damn Daniel line. Damn Daniel was, or is a gecko that is owned currently by Pangea. I don't think he was produced by Pangea. I think they bought him, but either way, I have some geckos that are descendants of Damn Daniel. Damn Daniel, as far as Dalmatians go, is one of the nicest, not structurally, sorry Pangea, but his structure, especially head structure, not great. He's kind of skinny, but that's just my personal opinion. I'm not crapping on him. I literally have his offspring and his genetics because I like him so much. So it's not any hate. It's just, I don't necessarily love 
his head structure or things like that personally. I wanted that lineage because of what he is and where he comes from in my line. So I'm gonna mix it in eventually, not yet. All of mine are too small, but I have that lineage for in the future, I can mix it into my lines to pair that awesome Dalmatian spots, oil spots, ink spots, tons of spots into my lines to make my lines even stronger because a lot of my geckos don't come from huge breeders or big lines. So like a lot of my stuff is different from everybody else's Dalmatians and a lot of everybody else's lineage and lines because I'm not going for all the huge stuff. I focus on lineage, structure, and then the actual like patterning or the looks of them. Those are the three things that I focus on. Lineage, structure, and the pattern or the looks. Now, lineage, I just kind of explained lineage. Structure is basically like the angle of the head, the crest, the size of the head, the size of the body of the gecko. Like if you have a really skinny gecko that are like just super, super skinny, obviously, like I said, there's a lanky phase for all geckos. Everything like that goes into structure. You want good structure. And if you wanna know what great structure is and what it's supposed to look like, I have a whole video explaining crusty gecko structure. I also have a whole video explaining Dalmatian spots. Watch those videos because that explains more of, you know, the structure that I look for. A lot of people will sell geckos that have horrible structure, but a ton of spots for a ton of money. I that's I don't think that's worth it to me personally. That's not a good structured gecko. I want good lines. I want big, healthy, robust geckos, big heads, big crests, floppy heads, tons of spots, ink spots, oil spots, just you name it. I think you guys will see once I start producing more, showing you guys more of the stuff I'm producing. Side note, we have like 13 or 14 pairs of Dalmatians going this year. Crazy amount. Like I, I, I work by myself. My girlfriend will help occasionally but she also has her own job. So it's just me, people. I don't have anybody working for me. I make my own videos. I take care of my own animals. I do everything myself. Give me a thumbs up. It just helps the channel out a ton and I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. Oh, one more thing before we get into selling geckos and you guys purchasing geckos from me, if you want to, let me just say one thing. If you're buying a gecko from me, I have, especially one that I've bred or one that I've cared for for a long time, I have seen that gecko Personally, me, myself, I've looked at and inspected that gecko's tank and that gecko one to two times a day, every single day, forever. I don't take days off. I don't have vacations. I can't. I mean, if I'm sick, I still have to take care of the geckos, which again, I know that's not this video. I keep getting distracted. I have ADHD people. It's hard for me to stay on topic and actually focus. So, you know, I'm trying here. Getting back on topic. These are my babies long before they're yours. So like... I have the hardest time selling them. I've been hoarding them for years. I know you guys have been asking me, when are you gonna sell them? When's the market out? Yada, yada, yada. I, I have a hard time selling them. I don't want to sell my geckos. <laughs> like I produced a lot of these geckos. I don't want to sell them, but we're getting to a point to where I have so many and we're coming up on the next breeding season. I need to sell them to create room for the upcoming season. So rest assured, the morph market is set up. I haven't posted anything, so I know some people were wondering, like, why can't I find you? I haven't posted the actual link to find it, and I don't know if it really will show up if you haven't posted anything. So, you know, that's kind of where I think everything's at right now. I have one or two more things to figure out, and then they will start being posted. So make sure you guys have your notification bell on. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, too, because I'll make an announcement on there the community tab, and I'll probably post a video, maybe even a short on it. So if you guys miss it, it won't be my fault. It'll be your fault for not, I guess, staying up to date or following my channel. I don't know, whatever. It'll be your own fault. Also, if you guys are wondering what that little brown spot is on her leg, she stepped in her food and I caught her. That was crazy. All right, guys, now that is the majority of the information that I know on how to keep crested geckos and how to keep them happy and healthy. Again, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments and I can answer any questions or make another video. If you guys are wondering if I didn't explain something as well as you'd like me to, what would you guys like to see for our, our upcoming videos? Like, would you like to see how to get rid of suck shed or how to help with suck shed? Would you like to see a chameleon gecko care guide? That one would be fun because nobody on YouTube has a chameleon gecko care guide. A lot of people will explain, you know, how they care for them, but they're like five, six, seven years old. If we do an updated one, it'll be the only one on YouTube. Just like my crocodile gecko care guide is, I think the only one on YouTube, unless somebody's done it since I made it, but it's the only one on YouTube because nobody has crocodile geckos. Nobody loves chameleon geckos. I don't know why they're cooler. Cover your ear holes. 
They're cooler than crusty geckos, people. Chameleon geckos specifically are cooler than them, no doubt. Would you guys like to see an upcoming video be about breeding crusty geckos or how I breed crusty geckos? Would you guys like to see a video on the pairs of crusty geckos I'm pairing? Like I said, we've got 13 or so pairs that we're gonna be pairing. So if you guys wanna see a video on that, let me know. This video took a ton of work. Like I said, I have ADHD and it's so hard for me to focus. So if I get off topic or if I rambled in the video, I'm very sorry, but you know, it is what it is. Make sure to like the video, make sure to comment. Even if you don't have anything super, you know, crazy to say, make sure to share with your friends. It greatly helps the channel. We've been growing like crazy and I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Like I said, when we get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna get a camel, maybe two. Uh, obviously I'd have to move houses and kind of change my life if that, you know, once we get to 100,000, but when that happens, I will be getting camels. It's a dream pet of mine. And if you guys help me get there, we're gonna do it. Thank you for watching. If you are a subscriber of mine and you have been for a while, you guys know how much I care about you and how much you guys have helped my channel grow. If you guys are new, definitely consider subscribing because we're only going off from here, people. I look at my channel a year ago to now, I've grown significantly as a YouTuber. So thank you guys, cannot thank you enough. Like, subscribe, share, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future or if this video helped you. Peace out. Nubby says peace.